let's do something interesting today. Today, we're going to talk about backup electric power. This isn't about off-grid power. That's something completely different. And different for what I can only describe as financial reasons. Backup power is for anyone who's attached to the grid for their primary electrical power. And the only need for backup power is when the grid goes down or is offline. Where I live, that's about twice a year for a handful of hours. The longest I've ever been without power is 14 hours. The most I've ever needed backup power is two or three times in a one year period. Simple Tech, that's the name of this channel. And if you wanna see more content like this and not have YouTube suggest some yuppie fat of the moment, you need to tell YouTube's algorithm that by liking and subscribing. Unless you want more yuppie fluff, liking and subscribing to content like this gets you more content like this. Not just from Simple Tech, but from other creators who also produce content on the same topics. Like and subscribe to what you like, and YouTube will actually show you more suggested videos on that topic. So to be clear, I want to say up front, I'm a huge fan of solar and wind power for off-grid electricity. It's actually a goal of mine to go off-grid completely someday. And I live in a location with a lot of wind and a lot of sunlight. So a combination wind and solar system would work really well where I live. The only thing holding me back is cost. A solar and wind system with inverters, good batteries, solar panels and wind turbines and other parts would run about twenty to $30,000 if I source all my parts and do most of the installation myself. Ouch! There is a cheaper alternative. A gas generator. Yes, there are propane and natural gas generators and often the natural gas lines don't stop when the power stops. But to end that argument for me, I live in a location where piped in natural gas is not an option. Now, most people have electric heat here and other options are geothermal, electric, propane. A few people use wood and if you've been watching this channel, you'll know I'm one of those few people using a wood boiler for heat in the winter. Heating in the winter is two thirds or more of a typical Canadian household energy usage. If you can heat with a method other than electricity, then your electricity usage isn't all that huge. There are some big electrical users in most houses, like the stove, for example. And most people here have an electric stove, but in a rare power outage where I live, I can use a toaster oven or air fryer those days to cook. I'll go over what I have that uses power in a bit. So what's the cost of a gas generator? In Winnipeg, Manitoba, you can get a seven to 9,000 watt gas generator for under $1,500. Yes, you can pay more. Yes, Hondas are the best gas generators I know, uh, but there are many thousands of dollars more. But back to reality again, for something I'm gonna use for maybe two times a year, a Champion generator is more than enough. I got my Champion 8,000 watt generator for about 600 bucks. It was a last of its model and Canadian Tire was blowing them out. If you're not Canadian, Canadian Tire is where Canadians go to buy Christmas presents for dad. They carry everything tool and car related. I had a 9,000 watt Champion generator before. It was eight years old and not quite as reliable. And rather than fix it, I opted for brand new again so I'd have less worries in a storm. Then there's my hookup. My electrician charged me about $800 to add a plug that goes directly into my 100 amp home electrical panel. I have to cut the main power before turning on the generator and that's about it. It's not an automatic backup system. It requires manual input from me flipping a switch and plugging in and starting up my generator. I could have had everything automatic, but I'm not a hospital needing immediate emergency power. And the way I did it with a manual system saved me thousands of dollars over much fancier automated systems. Now, what can this 8,000 watt champion gas generator power here? Well, in my circumstance, pretty much my whole house. We have to power some basics like my well pump and hot water tank. And then there's the stuff inside the house like lights, fridge, TV, Starlink, computers, greenhouse blowers outside, wood boiler pumps, and it's air flute, hot tub. It's a small inflatable hot tub that uses less than 1500 watts, but I love it. What I can't do is power my electric heaters, my electric clothes dryer, or my electric stove. Now, using my electric clothes dryer, electric heaters, or stove for a half a day really isn't a big deal. My wood boiler can heat my house for very little power usage. 
My concern is being able to operate most of my normal life stuff until full grid power is back. So 8,000 watts more than covers what I need on a short-term basis. Basically, I can go a couple of days without grid power using my gas generator comfortably. As I stated before, I would much rather have a solar and wind power system. A solar and wind system is way cheaper to run if it's your primary source of power and pays for itself over time. The problem I have where I live, on-grid power is really cheap. And an off-grid system would take 7 to 12 years to pay off. And that's if I scrounged everything myself and did it myself. So for comparison, my Champion generator uses about 20 liters of fuel for about 10 hours. That's about $30 per storm, twice a year, or say $60 a year in fuel. A solar and wind system is free to run, but if I was to run gas generator for all my power needs, it would be about $70 a day in gas to run at current gas prices here. That's $25,000 a year in fuel alone, and obviously a wind and solar system would pay for itself in one or two years. But using the gas generator only once or twice a year, my total cost is under $2,000 for the generator gas and installation hookup to my home. It's 90% less, and then the next year it's only the gas. So why a gas generator? In my circumstance where it's used only for backup power, it's solely cost. If I was choosing between a gas and solar for my primary power, solar and wind would win hands down. Also, if I was building new and had to bring an on-grid power line to my house, the cost of that is astronomical and solar and wind would win hands down again on it as the cost would absolutely be astronomical to do that and there'd be no power bill. Alternative energy is coming, but today, I'm forced by economics to use a gas guzzling backup generator. Mind you, where I live in Manitoba, my on-grid power is from hydro dams, so plugging into the grid here is ecologically friendly and cheap. Hope to see you next time, and if you get a chance, check out my archives for more interesting videos on alternative heating and cooling topics. <laughs> and then, come on, Junk! <laughs>